Performing both sides now from her third album, Someone to Watch Over Me, the great Susan Boyle. To make me feel better. After her phenomenal audition for Britain's Got Talent, Susan Boyle untapped new heights of success that one can only dare to imagine. She wasn't an instant favorite, but her big, soulful voice would change everything for me. She would embark on a successful career. If you were to win America's Got Talent, the champion. And her bank balance would exceed $45 million. And then she suddenly disappeared from the public eye. Join us as we reveal what happened to the singer and other parts of her story. Susan Boyle's Early Life. Susan Boyle is living, thriving proof that you should never judge a book by its cover. When the singer decided to audition for the high-profile British show, she was 47. And if she had followed the arbitrary rules set by the world for her, we would have probably never heard a voice as soulful as Susan's. As soon as Boyle took center stage at Britain's Got Talent, her un-pop star-like appearance immediately threw off the judges as well as the audience present. The widely viewed audition clip shows people making faces at her. But as soon as Susan opened her mouth to belt out an incredible iteration of I Dreamed a Dream, a single note from the singer was enough to shut her harshest critics. That audition would change Susan's life. She would go on to become a Grammy-winning artist, and she sold more than 25 million records with her brief stint in singing. But the world still remembers how brutally she was received on the Britain's Got Talent stage. Sadly, that experience wasn't new for Susan, who was once a very convenient target for bullying in her school and beyond. In fact, the singer's stories are the epitome of the rags-to-riches scenario. From an excruciatingly painful early life to a public breakdown, she has gone through the harshest of times. Boyle was born in Blackburn, West Lothian, Scotland, to the house of an immigrant family who originally hailed from County Donegal, Ireland. Her father, Patrick Boyle, was a World War II veteran turned minor. The family income was hardly enough, but Susan's mother, Bridget, helped her husband raise their ten children by working as a shorthand typist. It's true that the family lived an average life, but Patrick was perhaps monumental in shaping his daughter's career. When he wasn't mining, he was singing at the Bishop's Blaze. Watching her father singing melodious tones uplifted Susan's moods, and at the same time, the experience transpired in her a desire to sell arenas and make a name for herself in the world of music. But at that time, a very young Susan Boyle was also living her worst nightmare. Patrick Boyle was known to be a family man, but his experiences in the war had turned him into a bitter, callous father who took out his anger on his children. In particular, he would regularly beat Susan even at the mildest inconveniences. If he didn't have enough money to feed his family, he would hit his daughter in an attempt to release his anger. The abuse continued for years, and eventually, in 1997, Patrick Boyle passed away after a severe illness. During the last few years of his life, Susan had to take care of him. While she was able to reconcile with her father, she didn't get over her trauma, which would stay with her despite her massive success in the world of music. Describing this heartbreaking experience, she revealed that she was able to let go of the disdain she had for her dad. Talking about her father's passing, she remarked, You have to accept it, that's maturity. It's not easy, but you have to let it go and replace it with a new self. That's what I've been focusing on in the past six months. It's difficult. I have a lot of good and bad memories. I've been coming to terms with it. There's no doubt that Susan's childhood was traumatic. Yet her desire to become a musician persisted. Difficult school years. But from the very start, that dream seemed further away than the stars. You see, Susan was the youngest of six sisters and four brothers. When Bridget got pregnant with her youngest child, she was already a 47-year-old woman with little resources to take care of her. The birthing process was almost life-threatening. And in the process, Susan was briefly deprived of oxygen, which led to her learning disabilities, or at least, that's what she was told. Later, at the apex of her career, she learned something entirely new about her diagnosis. However, it's not a shock that school wasn't a very rewarding experience for the singer. She recalled being relentlessly bullied at the hands of her peers and teachers alike. In a heart-wrenching interview, she revealed that it was hard for her to keep up with a system that rewarded speed and fast learning. In her own words, I was a slow learner. I'm just a little slower at picking things up than others. So you get left behind in a system that just wants to rush on, you know? That was what I felt was happening to me. And when she wasn't able to catch up with her academics, she was punished in cruel ways. Her old school, unprofessional teachers had no understanding of learning disabilities. Whenever Susan failed a test or didn't perform well on class assignments, 
her teachers would beat her up using a belt. The constant bullying was somehow worse. Her peers nicknamed her Susie Simple at school and hurled her with cruel insults in class and outside of it. While talking to the Daily Mail, the singer recounted this harrowing experience multiple times. She revealed that bullying and corporal punishment made school almost intolerable for her. Citing school as the worst time of her life, she also remarked that getting bullied stunted her self-growth and created even more hurdles for her academic journey. So when she took the stage at Britain's Got Talent, it was her subtle, kind way to get back at her assailants who told her that she's not going to amount to anything. And oh boy, what sweet revenge it was. Later on, Susan would write and perform You'll See for her first album, a song that reminds the singer's bullies that despite their heartlessness, she made it. But her trajectory certainly wasn't easy. In 2011, the singer revealed a shockingly tragic experience of her childhood that wasn't publicly known. Other than her undiagnosed learning disability, she had epilepsy too. The doctors had made a correct diagnosis, but her parents and teachers didn't exactly know how to handle the illness. Epilepsy isn't entirely unknown to musicians. Great names like Sir Elton John, Neil Young, and Lil Wayne suffer from epilepsy too. But in Susan's case, the diagnosis was severely mishandled. She recalled that she would have seizures in school regularly, and that would give her bullies more ammunition against her. During her lessons, she would faint, and upon gaining consciousness, her peers would gather around her, call her names, and laugh at her predicament. Things weren't too different at home either. Her parents would wrap her up in cotton during her episodes, and if the problem became too troublesome, she would be left to fend for herself. If she asked for extra help, her father would call her touchy. The general assumption was that Susan's epilepsy was credited to her learning disabilities, which, of course, isn't the case. So the syndrome essentially went untreated. It is not a shocker that Susan graduated from school with zero laurels. Since she had very few qualifications from her school, she had trouble finding a job. Plus. Her undiagnosed learning disability was also a barrier in her pursuit of a job. According to Susan, she applied to multiple places to earn a respectable wage, but she either didn't get a callback or failed after her very first interview. She would eventually get a job as a trainee cook in the kitchen of West Lothian College. But that gig lasted only six months. Mostly the singer had to hop onto one government training program from the other. She didn't have a stable job or an ample income, but she would still find joy and solace in performing at different local venues, which was the extent of her musical career. Yet, a tragic loss would make her pursue a dream she hadn't dared to. Susan Boyle's Groundbreaking Audition Despite having a very unkind family life, Susan believed in the tremendous human pursuit of forgiveness and selflessness. It is true that the singer didn't have much to go by. She revealed that she wasn't a romantic during her Britain's Got Talent stint. In her own words, never been married, never been kissed. Her reputation for modesty and decency led her to make transformative life decisions. After her father's passing, all of her siblings eventually left their four-bedroom council house, leaving their old, sick, and frail mother behind. Only Susan and her 10-year-old cat, Pebbles, had decided to stay back. Much later in her life, Boyle would become a world-class musical artist who'd end up earning millions. But surprisingly, to this day, she lives in her childhood home to embrace the simplicity of her life. When the singer wasn't doing odd jobs or caring for her mother, she was singing for her local church, where she volunteers even today. Before her volunteer work, Susan used to sing in the church's choir. Now she visits the elderly members of her church in their homes for lively conversations and occasional singing. During very unsettling times, Susan's mother, Bridget Boyles, encouraged her to pursue music. In fact, before appearing on Britain's Got Talent, the singer sent her tapes to recording labels, television producers, radio channels, and so on. Yet there was little to no success. Disappointed, Susan tried to give up music multiple times. She would still continue to sing in her church's choir, but at certain moments, she didn't want to pursue her passion professionally. Her mother would keep encouraging her, though. Then, a tragedy struck that compelled Susan to register for the Britain's Got Talent auditions. Just slide through my After giving the most memorable singing audition on the show, Susan revealed that while she was singing her heart out on the stage, she was reeling with the painful loss of losing her mother. Before her daughter could find her breakthrough moment, Bridget Boyle had passed away at the age of 91. Susan was grief-stricken. Her neighbors reported that she was distraught and refused to come out of her house for three days. She wouldn't eat or take calls, 
and when it was suggested that she leave her mother's house to start anew, she outright refused. Yet, to honor her mother, Susan began to take her musical pursuit very seriously. That's also when the homegrown singer had found some time for herself. She was taking care of her mother alone, which drained her emotional and physical capacity to lead musical opportunities, and trust when we say that she didn't leave any stone unturned. In her own words, I'd been to 12 auditions for various things before. I'd actually already auditioned for X Factor previously, and it was suggested that I should audition for Britain's Got Talent. Susan's fans were stunned after learning that the singer hadn't even made it to the audition phase of X Factor, probably owing to her simple approach to dressing and presenting herself. Susan wholeheartedly believes that your job as a musician is to sing and not dress like a runway model. I don't need anyone this time. But Britain's Got Talent at least brought her to the stage in front of a cruel, standoffish audience who desperately wanted Boyle to fail at the one thing she loves. Well, that plan went down the drain, didn't it? And good for Britain's Got Talent for not pulling off an X Factor. But of course, as you might have witnessed it, Susan's audition wasn't off to a very good start. Foremost, the audience didn't think she was dressed for the part or met the proper age criteria to compete in the competition. Secondly, the judges seemed to be extremely rude as well. When Susan talked about wanting to be as successful as Elaine Page, Simon Cowell visibly scoffed at her. She is the perfect example of never judge a book by its cover. I dream the dream. You know what happens next, though? Susan opened her mouth and shocked everyone. One of the judges on the show, Amanda Holden, described it as the biggest wake-up call ever for the audience and the panel alike. Famously, Susan had performed I Dreamed a Dream from Les Miserables. For Susan, the audition was a perfect homage to her mother. In her own words, at the time, my mother had just died. I would have loved her to have seen it, but I believe she was there spiritually to see what was going on. She was right beside me. I decided to just tough it out. And it is just marvelous that the stint alone had made the singer a global phenomenon. Here's how Susan's Boyle success arc. It's true that the audience at Britain's Got Talent had been dismissive of Susan Boyle because of her appearance. She was dressed in plain clothes, but her powerful voice had rendered everyone speechless, including the judges. The striking contrast between her bullying on stage and the standing ovation she ultimately received during and after her performance was able to garner global interest. In the blink of an eye, Susan had become a star. Within the first week of her audition, many videos of Susan Boyle, including small clips of her performances like her 1999 rendition of Cry Me a River, had become an internet sensation. Her audition clip alone was viewed over a hundred million times. Ultimately, Boyle would become a successful contestant on the show despite her battles with illnesses and exhaustion. However, she couldn't lift the Britain's Got Talent trophy. The profoundly talented singer had stood second in the show just after the dance troupe diversity. It didn't matter, though. Susan had won the most important battle of her life, the fight to win public approval. And it's safe to say that above everything else, the singer had conquered the hearts of everyone who had seen her on the show. For many people harboring their own hopes and dreams, Susan represented a glimmer of hope that pursuing what you love is not too late and dreams can come true at any age. No wonder her first album, I Dreamed a Dream, which came out in November 2009, was a smashing success. The album broke all sales records inside the United Kingdom and beyond. I Dreamed a Dream sold more than 2 million copies worldwide within a week of its release, making it one of the fastest-selling debut albums by a female artist of all time. The album also became Amazon's best-selling album in pre-sales. Six weeks after its release, it was clear that Susan Boyle was a star. The album had become the best-selling record in the world in 2009, selling more than 9 million copies. Citing the success of the album, Billboard reported, The arrival of I Dreamed a Dream marks the best opening week for a female artist's debut album since SoundScan began tracking sales in 1991. Following the success of her debut album, the Guinness World Records attributed multiple feats to Susan Boyle's name. She made the world record for having the fastest-selling debut album by a female artist in the United Kingdom, the most successful first week of sales, and the oldest person to reach number one with a debut album in the country. The tales of her big voice reached all the nooks and crannies of the world. But in particular, 
Susan Boyle had made a name for herself in America. And if that's not a benchmark of a successful music career, then what is? She got the golden chance to appear on another celebrated reality show, America's Got Talent, where she was received with warmth and kindness. Susan Boyle, you can go back to the village with your head held high, it's three S's. Gone were the days of everyone around Susan undermining her. The singer herself acknowledged that her success has made her truly embrace the world around her. She was no longer afraid, and rather than being a spectator in her own life, she was enjoying it as the main character. And well, Susan was on a roll. Following the noise that her debut album created, Susan released two more albums. The Gift came out in 2010, and in the very next year, she recorded and released Someone to Watch Over Me. After a year of hiatus, Boyle was back with a bang. This time, she wanted everyone to feel the joy of Christmas. Her festive album was called Standing Ovation, the greatest songs from the stage, and it came out in 2013. Two years later, she came up with another groundbreaking record, Hope, and she released A Wonderful World in 2016. After consistently working on her music, Susan took an indefinite break. Withered with old age and plagued by other illnesses, the singer's music seemed to be done and dusted. But of course, if there's anyone who can shock her audience again and again, it is Susan Boyle. In 2019, she surprised her fans by celebrating a decade of her career. An album titled 10 encapsulated the very best of Susan Boyle, and as usual, she surpassed all odds to make her mark on the musical industry again. But with triumph, there was sadness too. Susan's loyal fans couldn't help but notice that her heart-wrenching diagnosis had changed the singer drastically. Despite having a lot to offer, Boyle prefers to live a quiet life far away from the glitz and glamour of creating soulful melodies. Beneath the behemoth crown of success, there's a tragedy about Susan Boyle. And uh, I have really had a lot of fun making the album, and I hope the public like it as much as I enjoyed making it. Heartbreaking Revelations it's true that Britain's Got Talent had put Susan at the top of the world, but the extensive and rigorous training regime had exhausted the singer, too. While she was content with her singing, fame was very new to her. Following her appearance on the show, she couldn't keep up with the jarring routine of appearing in interviews, smiling for the paparazzi, and stomaching critics being unnecessarily harsh and rude towards her. Susan's reputation preceded her, but she was still not able to win the show. And right after the finale, she had to be admitted to the hospital. The media scrutiny that had spanned five weeks had exhausted her, and physically, she was getting frail. Later, it was revealed that Susan had suffered a breakdown. Despite being exceptionally talented, she failed to get enough public votes, and that led her to lash out at the show manager. Rumors emerging from the set revealed that Susan had thrown water at one of the staff members while yelling that she hated the show. Later that night, the staff at her London home called the police, but the singer was acting strangely. How does it feel to be back at PGT? It feels great. Um... <laughs> A few hours later, Susan had to be admitted to a mental health care facility. The news of her breakdown spread like wildfire. It was also revealed that the producers of Britain's Got Talent had purposefully ignored Susan's fragile mental and physical health leading up to the final. Oxfam, the United Kingdom's media regulator, wanted to initiate an inquiry on the show regarding prioritizing their show's ratings over the participants' deteriorating health. Yet the idea was later dropped. That experience taught Susan to take her music schedule a bit lightly. But the idea didn't seem feasible as she had a tough touring timetable right before her. The singer went on, though. She kept performing brilliantly for her fans while simultaneously working on her music. Susan suffered another setback in her career in 2013 when she finally got an accurate diagnosis for her learning disability. It turns out that the singer didn't have brain damage at all. That was simply a mistake that the doctors had made while diagnosing her as a child. In actuality, the singer was suffering from a form of autism spectrum disorder known as Asperger's. While the revelation itself was devastating, it was a blessing in disguise for the singer too. For years, she had spent her time thinking about how a minor inconvenience at the time of her birth had caused her permanent damage. Whenever she looked back at her academic years, she'd think about how unlucky she had been. But the Asperger's diagnosis helped her to get the right treatment for the first time in her life. Talking about her diagnosis with The Guardian, the singer revealed that she always knew that the label of being brain damaged always felt cruel and unfair to her. Deep down, 
She knew she was like everybody else, but she just had her own way of doing things. At the same time, Susan also hoped that her diagnosis would help people treat neurodivergent individuals far more kindly than they do. In the same interview, she said, I think people will treat me better because they will have a much greater understanding of who I am and why I do the things I do. After making these brave revelations, Susan got an outpouring of support from her fans and critics alike. People also appreciated that the singer was being authentic and honest about her life experiences, a tendency that most celebrities shy away from. If this wasn't enough, the singer was also forced to give up her only vice in the very same year. Her love for eating chocolate in distressing times became a complicated affair when she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Sure, the diagnosis was timely, but Susan once again had to grapple with a new lifestyle that was still getting used to autism. Later, when the pandemic hit, she had to take extra measures to protect herself from the contagious COVID-19 virus. That caused another rift in her musical career. For at least two and a half years, she had to stay at home and not interact with individuals who could have helped her record another groundbreaking album. Yet Susan's life was just not about public support and successful albums. Back home, things were bad too. In 2010, the singer had finally got herself a house with her earnings, but a group of rowdies made her life miserable. They would throw rocks at her, would try to break into her house and throw fire-lit paper at her house. Eventually, she returned to her childhood house and gave her fancy abode to her niece. She was generally sad about her experiences, but it was actually her sister's sickness that led Susan to take a brief hiatus before her 2015 comeback. The singer's sister, Bridie, had lost her life to cancer at the age of 73. And since she was closest to her celebrity sister, Susan was emotionally distressed after her passing. On top of that, she had to take care of Bridie's daughter, too. After Boyle's explosive success, Bridie had proved herself to be a supportive sister in several ways. She stood by Susan when the media was scrutinizing her for arbitrary things like her appearance. And she definitely kept her sister grounded when success followed her everywhere. But more importantly, Bridie was her sister's keeper during her ugly feud with her brother, Jerry. You see, Suzanne's success meant that she had millions in her bank account. And everyone, including the singer's very own siblings, wanted a piece of that. The issue arose when Susan only decided to help her brother, Jerry, by giving him 75,000 pounds to save his failing business. When her other siblings took an issue with that, she claimed that Jerry had threatened to commit suicide if she didn't give him a check. That caused a fallout among the pair, and Jerry publicly accused his sister of lying. But in 2016, Susan's other public breakdown at Heathrow Airport would reunite the siblings in a heartwarming ending to their feud. What's Susan doing now? Unfortunately, the singer's health woes have not ceased. In 2022, it was revealed that Susan had suffered a minor stroke that further steered her way from pursuing music. The singer announced this heartbreaking piece of news after her stellar performance at the Britain's Got Talent stage in the same year. After 14 years of her appearance on the same platform, Susan was invited as a guest to sing alongside the West End Les Miserables cast. The moment was very emotional, and in the midst of that, Susan told the world, it's extra special for me, actually. Last April there, I suffered a minor stroke, and I thought it'd be crazy to be back on stage, and I've done it. Later that night, she took to Instagram to tell her followers that she had to do extensive speech practice to sing her beloved song, I Dreamed a Dream. And well, her hard work paid off. Today, the singer is trying to maintain her musical pursuits against the backdrop of a multitude of illnesses. The, the sensational Susan Boyle, you've got me nervous. A stroke halted her plans to release new music, but she does so for her fans whenever Susan has the will and energy to belt out a few tunes, and yet she largely stays away from the public eye. Recently, she cited not having kids as one of her biggest regrets, but she definitely has a secret life with an American beau whose identity remains unknown even in the most nosy media circles. Back in 2016, she had told The Mirror that she was just chatting up with an American doctor and that they were definitely not serious at that moment. Things have changed drastically, though. Media reports reveal that the singer is in a happy, stable relationship. That's just one side of me. <laughs> but of course, Susan Boyle isn't interested in hard-launching her man, and she doesn't plan on getting married either. 
Her boyfriend does seem to accompany her on special occasions like her birthday. But that's everything we know about her love life before her mega appearance on the show. While her fans are happy for her, they want to hear new tunes from the singer. Susan is a gift that keeps on giving. So, we just have to wait patiently. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.